Hey guys, it's Kim Jong Spoon. Welcome back to World of Tanks Blitz. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the Tier 9 Monster German Medium, the Leopard Prototype A. I love this thing, I think it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, everything I want to see in a medium tank, this thing has, with some exceptions, but those exceptions are pretty small, so I really don't care. Uh, I'm going to show you guys three replays here that hopefully highlight the three main roles of this thing. The first one here is going to be uh, about its role as a spotter and a scout. The second one's going to be about its role as a flanker and a sniper. The last one's going to be about its role as a brawler and a hunter. So, um, I have two replays here on uh, Falls Creek. I keep getting this map for some reason, but it's a really good map for the Leopard Prototype A. Um, because, really, you, you don't want to get shot, obviously. This thing's armor is atrocious. Uh, the frontal hull armor is 70 millimeters, and that's alright, I guess, but uh, the sides are 35 and the rear is 25. The turret armor, you actually get more turret armor on the sides than the front. It's 60 on the sides and rear and 52 on the front. Uh, nevertheless, I still do bounce shots somehow when I'm not even angled, but um, I don't know. It, it's just a weird tank. You get lucky bounces. I've bounced E100s and stuff like that somehow, so... It's, it's a lot of fun to drive. So we've pushed around the entire side of the map. No one's home. And uh, when I scout these guys, they're in the dumbest position. T-62A, God knows what he's doing. I barely missed that shot, and the Death Star gives him uh, a little face injury there. Takes out his gun, but I don't know where anyone else is. I'm thinking they've pushed around, but it, it turns out they're actually all sniping. So, yeah, don't do that. It's a stupid plan, and actually, hopefully, if you watch this video, you'll get to see why staying in the cap and just sniping is a stupid idea. Take a blind shot. Someone's taking pot shots at us. Not sure who that is yet. It's got to be one of their meds. Obviously, it wasn't a tank destroyer. We see their uh, Death Star there, and we're the ones spotting all these guys. So when we pop up and spot, that's all uh, going towards our spotting damage. Leo PTA, we track him, and then someone finishes him off. So pretty good. We also got that assistance damage from tracking. Uh, we've taken out two of their tanks, pretty good ones too. We really want to get their Death Stars out of play. Um, so we've been just really working this ridge line here, and the Leopard pr uh, Prototype A only gets 5 degrees of gun depression. The Leopard 1 gets 10, and that's a lot better, but you know, 5 degrees isn't that bad. Um, you will have some problems working ridges, but uh, especially if you're just spotted and you won't have any issues at all. So we've taken out three of their tanks, some of the other ones have pushed around, so I'm gonna move. Uh, this thing is incredibly mobile, obviously, because it only weighs 40 tons and it has an 830 horsepower engine, so you get really good mobility. Um, the top speed 65 kilometers per hour. I've gone faster, but it really won't get to, to 65 if you're on um, any kind of soft terrain, like if you're on one of the desert maps, you won't get there. Um, the gun is absolutely fantastic. Uh, the gun is actually basically the same gun as you get in the Sent 71 and the uh, 4502, not the 4502, the 4202. Um, it's the uh, 10.5 centimeter L7A1. Uh, this thing is absolutely fantastic. You get seven rounds a minute, which is really good uh, for a medium tank. That's almost tier 10 medium standards. Um, the Leopard 1 gets 8, which is ridiculous. Uh, it gets 268 mils of pen with APCR, which will get through anything tier 10 side or rear. Most of the front armor. You'll have problems with E100s or maybe T110E5s, but pretty much nothing else because you'll just go through it like butter. 330 on the heat pen, which is obviously amazing. Uh, so I, I only carry a few heat shells, and at tier 9, you'll, you're facing you know tigers. So if they fail to. Uh, they, they, the plus one, minus one is really helpful here, but, um, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of fail tunes recently with Tigers and stuff, so, uh, you know, 268 mils of pen for a Tiger, it goes in one side and not the other. Uh, Post-game stats, we didn't actually do a whole lot of damage there, 2400, but we do get a spotter medal, and uh, actually take a look at the detailed report, we did 3600 assistance damage, which is insane. That's so much. We almost... We more than doubled our total damage output with assistance damage. Um, so that's basically its role as a spotter. I was just working that ridge line, and I was the one spotting all those tanks. The other, my teammates would not have been able to see them unless I was working that ridge. So that's why we got all that assistance damage. Here on mines, we do get the good side, so I'm able to push up to the hill over, like, I don't have to go up where the normal tanks have to go. I can literally just drive up the side of the hill because this thing has ridiculous engine power. 
It's really kind of hard, and sometimes I don't make it, but that's why I carry speed boost on this thing. It's literally only for mines, because I want to get up on that hill. Actually, it's only for this one side of mines, because you can't do this on the other side. So my speed boost is kind of worthless, except for right now. So we barely make it up the hill. I'm still trying to figure out what direction and angle you're supposed to go, but we make it up. I'm looking because they have an RU, and they have a couple meds that I don't want to face one by one. Um, and our Centurion is camping. Yay! Uh, my team is actually pushing up to the hill though, so that's good, um, and no one's coming up the hill from the reds. So I'm going to flank around these guys and get side shots. I see all of them over here. Uh, I'm going for the tier 9. I'm not going to shoot the, the engine panzer. I mean, it's a tier 8. What's it going to do? I put one at the M103. He's on a Dren, so we're just going to waste his Dren here. Um, there's no sense in fighting someone who has adrenaline, especially now that it's only 15 seconds. Like, you can wait 15 seconds before you shoot. So I take the shot at him there. Luckily, we hit his turret cheek. Uh, this gun is crazy accurate. Um, it's uh, .32 accuracy, which is obviously German mediums have ridiculous accuracy. And uh, .2, sorry, 2.3 second aim time. .23 would a little, be a little bit overpowered. Um, but as you can see here, the 5 degrees of gun depression really doesn't quite work here. We put a heat shell into his observation device so it doesn't pen. Yas. Uh, and 5 degrees, we, we actually can't go forward and hit any of these guys, so my theory is I'm just going to do damage while I can. So I'm pulling up behind uh, these guys, Conqueror, boom, take a shot into him. And that Leopard PTA has moved up a little bit. Now the M103 has kind of disengaged, so we really don't have to worry about him, but basically we're just engaging the guy that's furthest to the right, so in this case it's the Leopard PTA, because if we can only shoot the Leopard PTA, then no one else can shoot us other than the Leopard PTA, and in this case he's looking off at La La Land. So we really can't get shot by anything at the moment. And as you can see, seven rounds a minute with his gun is really good. I think it's like eight seconds between shots. That is fantastic. Conqueror there, we'll take a shot at him, snag the kill. Uh, E75 is backing up, and um, we've saved our health for late game, which is a really uh, good idea in your mediums. It's, it's a lot of the best player strategy is just saving their health for late game. Um, so you can do things like this. I'm just trading shots with an E75, and because I'm basically still on full health, I can do that. We snag a pen on his turret, and basically there's nothing this guy can do. Uh, unfortunately, he gets under our guns, so we really can't do anything about it, um, but he's distracted by us right now, so our 12254 can get the kill on him. Um, and as a flanker, that's basically your job. If they were all looking at me, which they weren't luckily, but if they were, I still would have been just as effective because if they're looking at me, they're just inherently not looking at my friendlies. So um, my friendlies will get a lot of damage and get kills, and it won't really show up on the results screen, but I will have been really helpful to my team's victory. So flanking, great idea, and we 6-2 them. 7-2 them here. Uh, the M103's flanked somehow, hit a clutch shot, and uh, this M103 is the, this is the guy that got under a gun, was pretty annoying, but he spent the entire game flanking, so he was useless this entire time. Three kills, not bad, but we do do a buttload of damage that game, so let's check those post-game stats. four K first class tank sniper and this thing actually makes good credits, especially with a premium account. And I'm running camo, I'm running consumables, I'm running uh, provisions. So I'm spending a lot of credits, but I don't have to shoot premium anything. Like two hundred sixty eight mils of pen at tier nine, like there's nothing you're gonna face at tier nine other than tier tens that you'll have to shoot heat for. I think I shot uh, two heat rounds that game. Um, one to kill the M103 <clears throat> just to secure the kill and the other one at a uh, leopard uh, sorry, a uh, Indian Panzer, which I don't really want to talk about because that was a stupid shot. So this last game here, we're going to talk about this thing's role as a hunter and uh, not really a brawler because it can't just take hits. But um, I'll show you guys what I mean here. So basically, we want to push over and see where the other enemies are. As a scout, again, this thing is a fantastic scout. Um, we really want to be the first ones to get into battle because we can get we can get out fast. So if we spotted all seven of their guys, we could just turn and run. And we might take a couple hits while we're doing it, but at least we'll know where they are. Um, I was so concerned that my team wasn't doing anything here. Uh, literally, they're all sitting at spawn one. So, nice. Uh, finally, they all decide to move. I was concerned that this was going to end up like the first game that I showed you, where the entire team just sits there 
and camps. Um, but it actually turns out that sitting over there is not a bad idea because a lot of their heavies have gone over the bridge for some reason. I'm not sure why the meta is switching back to going over the bridge for heavies. I've seen it a couple times recently, but it's, it's not smart. I mean, I have the cap now basically solo. Uh, I can get shots on you. You really can't get shots on me. I dictate when I pop out and shoot. If I'm capping, you can't shoot me. So really there's no reasoning over the bridge unless you have like only heavies. Um, so we're waiting here. Hopefully we'll see that IS-8. There he is, and you take the shot. Again, 268 mils of pen is so much pen. Easily through the side of IS-8s. Um, the side of IS-8s will give you trouble from time to time, especially if you're using heat rounds, um, just because they have all that spaced armor. But um, for this gun, it's, it's butter. It's so easy to get through. Um, so we really want to be conservative with our health here because there are two heavies over there, the E75 and the IS-6, that we will have to contend with. So when we're uh, taking on this IS-8, we want we really don't want to trade shots. So we put one into him, back up, and he does manage to sneak a heat shell for some reason into us. But I know that I will out-reload him, so I just move in front, aim, and take the shot. So now it's me versus an E75 and an IS-6. I do have some friendlies with me, but I don't know if they're going to help or not. I mean, it's, it's a random battle. Pretty much everyone sucks is the mindset you have to go into it with. If you, if you like, assume that your team's going to help you, then you're going to get flanked or something like that. So just watch this engagement here with this IS-6. So I'm just baiting him right now, waiting for him to take the shot. I pop out, pull the trigger, and he goes over the hill and shoots the air with his heat shell. Or maybe it was HG. It was one of the two. Um, but either way, I, ha I know I have the reload to sneak another shot in. So the E-75 is missed, and because I've flanked them, they're both back turned to my friendlies. So now the IS-6 is coming over this way, doesn't have the gun depression, I sneak one in, and then I back up behind the T-54, who bounces heat off of the IS-6. And the IS-6 uh, hits him, but bounces. So then I can sneak another one into him, and I'm pretty sure I can reload uh, one more time, especially if he takes a shot at that T-54. T-54 doesn't kill him, and we get the shot through the track. So we didn't take any damage from that engagement, which is pretty sick. Um, you know, it's late game, we want to keep our health, and I see the back of that E-75, so I slither one in there, um, and, and now I want to kill this E-75, especially now that he's on such low HP, he's a priority target. I switch heat for the killing shot, because I've bounced so many killing shots, and that was a stupid shot. I'm gonna blame that one on lag, but deep down, I know that was blatantly my fault. Boom, snag the kill on the E75, and now there's only two guys left, but they could totally clutch this. Um, they were only, yeah, they're basically one shots, but I know that this kind of corner engagement's not necessarily the best idea for us um, with our mediums. So I, I miss a shot. I know they're not going to pop out. They're not being stupid. Um, so I pop my speed boost, and I just, I go for it. Took heat from that T54. Um, thanks, man. I'm not sure why everyone shoots heat at Leopard prototypes. Um, you could just shoot APCR and do just as fine. Uh, this is also another bad shot. Ooh, yeah. Let's let's pretend like I was aiming at the T54 for that one. But I know that I can kill the T54, so I sneak a shot into him, get the kill, and that's four. Can we get five? No. Our T54 kills the uh, IS-3 defender. But I took the shot on the T-54 because he was more of a priority threat, and the T-54s can do more DPM than uh, the IS-3 Defender, so I obviously took the shot on him, and Tier 9s give you more XP. 3,700 damage, first class, not bad. So hopefully those replays showed you how I play the Leopard uh, as a spawner, as a flanker, and as a hunter. Those are really the three roles I see the Leopard type, uh, prototype filling. Um, I know it's also a pretty good sniper, but I really don't have any gameplay showing off its sniping capabilities because I'm more aggressive than that. Uh, I probably need to learn how to not be that aggressive, but whatever, it's my tank. I can slither around and take hits. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I'm really enjoying the Leopard prototype. Can't wait to get my hands on the Leopard one. I played it on the test servers a couple times, and it's absolutely fantastic. And uh, I'm doing pretty well in it so far. So hopefully after I figure out all of its little quirks, I'll be doing even better. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for more awesome tank videos. Thanks.